Hello there and welcome to the Museum of Islamic Art here in Doha. I'm Laura Kyle. If you've been with us before on our Rewind series, you'll know that we're celebrating 10 years of Al Jazeera English by revisiting our most memorable documentaries. Well, in 10 years, a lot can change, and that's certainly the case for the former president of Gambia, Yahya Jame, who held a tight grip on power there for more than two decades. As you may know, his rule came to an end very recently, when after elections and a tense standoff, he was finally forced to stand down. More of that later. But first, a reminder of his somewhat eccentric leadership style. In 2007, Al Jazeera's Meet the President series sat down with Jame to talk about his startling claim that he could cure the sick. Let's take a look. <laughs> Welcome to the Gambia, land of sun, sea, sand, and a president who claims he can cure AIDS. I get rid of the virus from the body of the human being, and that's what I do. And he's granted us special access to his healing sessions. Hmm? Unusual. This is Africa. <laughs> Welcome to Africa. Meet the President of the Gambia, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Secretary of State for Defence, Chief Custodian of the Sacred Constitution of the Gambia, and now, he says, miracle worker. Yahya Jame has, he says, received a mandate to cure AIDS as long as it's on a Thursday, and he says he can cure asthma as long as it's on a Saturday. It's not a task he takes lightly. I feel a great burden, a big sense of responsibility, because they have all their hopes in me. If I fail, I would have failed them, I would have disappointed them. And the consequences will be very drastic for me as a person. So it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not fun. Coming out and treating these people is not fun. Somebody lying down there, knowing that maybe the guy has a few months to live, there are people who come in very bad condition. And lying down there, knowing that they have all their, only, they only have their hope in me, is a big burden. Morally, spiritually, and psychologically. So it's not something that one, anyone would do just for fun or just for mischief. I'm not a president that makes mis mischief in the world. But he is a president who makes headlines. President Yahya Jame has ruled the Gambia since seizing power in a military coup in 1994. He was an army officer then, only 29 years old. He's since won three disputed elections and is slowly tightening his grip on power. Until now, this tiny finger of land in West Africa was best known as a tourist destination for Europeans, escaping their harsh winters. Jamé's subjects, around one and a half million people, are amongst the poorest in Africa. They're reliant on subsistence farming, tourism and fishing. Like the rest of the continent, AIDS is destructive of ordinary life. Around 20,000 people here live with HIV. Outside State House, the president's home, people wait for hours in the stifling heat. All of Jame's treatment is free of charge. The gates open, the rush is on. These people are here for the asthma cure. It was in January that Jame announced that he had special healing powers handed down by his father. Having reached the age of 41, he said he was mandated to use those powers for his people. Most of his spare time is consumed with the treatment. In fact, the entire government machine, from the health minister downwards, seems to have swallowed the president's bizarre claims. Now, as you, as you could see, the patients are queuing, ready to 
take the medication from His Excellency the President. The President is a very strong man. He can spend hours here. Every day we do spend roughly 12 to 17 hours. I am a Western trained and I 100% believe in herbal medication. I've seen it working. This is my 14 to 15 year medical practice. I know when I tell you that this thing works, it works. Don't let me, don't let me intrude. And this is the start of his ritual. It takes in herbs, bananas, peanuts, and prayer. Like any medical examination, it begins with a fairly standard request. Take a deep breath. The pen is still there. Take a deep breath. Again. How's it? Is it Yes. At first glance, the results appear dramatic. How's it? It's better. Sir. It's gone or it's still there? It's gone. You tell me the truth. Yes, I'm telling you the truth, sir. It's gone or it's still there? It's gone. A greyish liquid made with secret herbs in an old water bottle is rubbed into the patient before the final stage of the treatment. Every step is followed by Gambian television and broadcast to the nation. Well, everything that we do, 90% has we have to invoke the name of the Almighty Allah, and then the 10% is already the half step prior. So what you're talking about is primarily faith healing? No, like in, in Western medicine, there are ingredients that we put into enhance certain things. Here, the baseline is the name of the Almighty Allah. But you can call it faith healing, yeah? But basically, faith, feel, uh, uh, faith healing does not normally uh, include herbs. In most cases, in Western they just say, recite something and touch your head and you grow. But this is a combination of both faith and herbs. Because, of course, also the Allah is the creator of all the herbs that we are using. The treatments may vary, but they always start and end with the same thing, a prayer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah. Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Allah akbar. Allah Jame's patients will go through this every day for between one and four weeks until it's decided that they've been cured. As the patient gets dressed, Jame blesses his special peanuts. What, what role does the peanut and the banana have in your I treatment? I think I've the role of the banana the other time. It loosens the system. Mm -hmm. Peanuts also have a lot of protein. Mm -hmm. Yes. But not easy to digest? Yes, yeah, it helps to get rid of the, the virus. But it's, a community. it's not just any peanut. You have to play on it. The president opens his briefcase and produces his formula. It's a combination of herbs stored in a tub, and it looks like sawdust. But the president is silent on the ingredients of his herbal recipe. What is this? Will you be prepared for scientists to come in from elsewhere in Africa, or indeed fellow herbalists or 
from other parts of Africa to spread this program. <laughs> Is it something that's bigger than Gambia alone? Each family keeps their secret. They don't pass it on to anybody. What I can do is train people that I, that, that I can train to treat people in the Gambia. Now, if you want treatment, you come to the Gambia and be treated. Whether I'll give this to anybody is no. N-O. Never in a million years. What about fellow Africans who are... Whether African, Asian, or, or, or somebody from uh, space, an alien, I will not give it to you. So it's not a question of race or where you are. It's a principle. Coca-Cola will not give the recipe to anybody, whether American or non-American. So with a cupful of evaporated milk, a secret blend of herbs, those peanuts and a banana, today's treatment is over. Gambia's Independence Day, a chance for international diplomats to mingle and enjoy Jamais' hospitality in the grounds of State House, said to be Africa's smallest presidential palace. In this tiny African state, you might think there'd only be one topic of conversation, but HIV AIDS doesn't seem to be on the agenda. But there are some who are prepared to talk, and their diplomatic language doesn't dismiss Jamais claims of a cure for AIDS and asthma. What we want His Excellency to do is to allow the international health institutions as soon as possible to come into the matter to establish the treatment he's given to these people and how far this treatment is going. And as soon as that is done, I tell you, I, we, we have no qualms, we have no problems with it. <laughs> give him a chance. I think we have to give him a chance. He's African and there are a lot of Africans who are expecting for new ways to be treated. Now we have to give time to time and see if it works. But uh, if he's doing something, I think uh, uh, it's worthwhile to see how it goes and we have to wish him success. Finding someone who'll criticize Jame in front of a camera is much harder. Perhaps that's because those who do don't last very long here. Like the UN permanent representative, who was told to leave after suggesting that Jame's claims for a cure could encourage risky behavior and worsen Africa's AIDS tragedy. No sooner have the diplomats left than he's heading back to the treatment room for another long night of presidential healing. I must put to you some of the reaction to the project here, uh, reaction from scientists such as Professor Jerry Kouvadier uh, from South Africa, an HIV researcher who says that you have violated every foundation of public health and science in making these claims. Now, how do you respond to that sort of I don't criticism? respond to a non-entity. But do you... Maybe he knows the origin of AIDS. Who is he to talk about what, what I do? So I will not respond because science is about natural laws. But is science about secrets? I don't owe that idiot any explanation because he's an idiot. He doesn't know anything about science. Who is this fool to ask me about violating whose rule? Is he the one who makes rules? He claims that the science involved here... He doesn't know anything about it. Is he the one who... Maybe he was part and parcel of those who created the virus in the first place, so he knows what should cure it and what should not cure it. But what is more important is, I do not... I do not... I should even, we should not even waste time talking about an ignorant person. Professor Jerry Covadia is an internationally renowned expert on AIDS. He holds the Nelson Mandela Award for Health and Human Rights in recognition of his work towards understanding the HIV epidemic. 
President Jemmy has a high school certificate in biology and chemistry. All of Jamie's patients are HIV positive. Some have been living with the virus for years. During their treatment, many patients gain weight and look physically better in the few weeks they've been under Jamie's care. But AIDS experts will tell you that can be down to a variety of factors, not least the psychological effect on patients. They all want to feel better. They all desperately want the treatment to work. Just that can be enough to make the body fight back against the HIV virus. But it's only temporary. The virus is still there, in the body, gradually taking control. The best treatment so far, recognized by doctors the world over, is a lifetime taking antiretroviral drugs, or ARVs. These hold the HIV virus at bay. Jamais patients have to stop taking ARVs. It's a condition of their treatment. Their lives are in his hands. Do you think you're cured of AIDS? That yes. you're cured of HIV? I still have um, some, you know, level of viral load, um, but I believe in time I will be cured, yes. Do you think that if you carry on with the treatment, you could be cured? Yes, it will, it will be cured. Today's session goes on until 4 a.m., and that isn't unusual. <laughs> You are laughing, you think that's funny? Everyone is exhausted. Does it concern you slightly that there could be an attitude within the public that the president has a cure for AIDS, we don't have to worry about it, and that could affect their behavior, their sexual behavior, and possibly cause a spread? No, I don't think so, because I don't think uh, any the mere fact that uh, the hospital can fix fractures does not mean that anybody will stand on me or try to cross uh, a busy highway, knowing that if you are cross without dying, you can be, you can, the hospital can fix it. I don't think anybody would joke with AIDS. If you have seen what I've seen, you see the type of how people suffer. At close range, you see the, how people, uh, AIDS victims, how their bodies are destroyed. I don't think anybody in his, in his or her correct state of mind would really flood with a disease like AIDS. Jamé's dream is to turn his country into the Dubai of Africa, a free trading, free enterprise economy. He wants to dramatically improve the standard of living of all Gambians. Every night, the television news puts out more propaganda. But do Jamé's claims of a cure for AIDS turn his country into an international laughing stock rather than a respected trading center? While Jamé treats his patients at the State House, youngsters party the night away in the capital's nightclubs. Many of these young people are most at risk from AIDS and they seem to have been brainwashed into believing that HIV is curable. Do you believe that the president of Gambia can cure HIV AIDS? Yeah, 100%. Let us try and believe, because he's the first man to say it, and whatever he says, he does it. Let's have a hope and trust in him. A cure for AIDS is something that the world is yearning for. So if we see somebody who says he can do it, we should give that person a chance and support him. <laughs> On Saturdays, asthma takes center stage. The treatment looks a bit like the one for AIDS. It's just that the blend of herbs is different and it only takes five minutes to cure. To his supporters, Jamé is a well-intentioned miracle worker. To his critics, he's a megalomaniac who risks harming AIDS awareness programs across a continent where the illness is already ravaging the population. But Jamé has no doubts. He says he's on a mission. Let me make one thing very clear. I'm not here to advertise my medicine. I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm not here to please anybody. I'm here to administer what I can do. 
and that's the most important thing. Well, following his defeat in elections last December, Jame initially refused to cede power to the victor and now President Adama Barrow. Al Jazeera's Nick Hack has been covering that story, so we caught up with him to ask about the situation there now, but also to find out more about the former ruler's years in office. Nick, thanks very much for joining us. Now, the president who famously once said that he would rule for a billion years has recently been ousted. Where is Jame now? Well, Laura, Yaya Jame now is in Malibu, which is the capital of Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea is not a signatory of the International Criminal Court, which means that Yaya Jame cannot be prosecuted for any crimes that they, he might be accused of by human rights organization under his 22-year rule. That's interesting, isn't it? Will there be any sort of investigation, do you think? Well, we spoke to Adam Aburo, the, the new president of Gambia, just after he was sworn into office, and he said that it was very important to put in place a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in order to heal the wounds of those 22 years of Yaya Jami's power. Uh, remember, the human rights organization have accused his security forces of gross human rights violation, you know, torture, enforced disappearance, um, and killing of, of uh, people in the opposition of opponents of his. How much support does Jame still enjoy in Gambia? I mean, how much opposition does the new president, Adama Barrow, face? Well, there was only 20,000 votes that separated Yaya Jame to Adam Abero. So a part of the population did support um, Yaya Jame and did vote for him. And remember the scenes when he left that, that, that famous night at the airport, when he left the country. He was holding the Quran in his hand and there were scenes of soldiers and women weeping as he left and as he flew off, um, and he flew off the tarmac in, in Gambia. We saw in Andrew's piece there this extraordinary belief that he has of himself and that others have in him as a healer of HIV AIDS. How will that legacy will on? Do people still believe that he did indeed have the cure? Absolutely, Laura. He believes that he can cure HIV and AIDS with water, a prayer, and a banana. And, and, and that belief really, um, really helped him to hold on to power because in that part of the world, in, in West Africa, traditional healing has an important part in society. And the reason being is because there isn't the, the, the hospitals and, and the doctors there to, to offer the, the, the treatment for, for normal um, diseases. I'm just wondering how all those years in power where he made people believe that he could cure them has set the country back in its fight against the disease. According to Gambian statistics, only 1% of the population um, has HIV and AIDS. Like many Muslim countries, the prevalence seems to be not, not that high. But the issue here is that Yahya Jami has used this idea that he can cure people with HIV and AIDS, that he has these superpowers to threaten people in the opposition. And so this idea that could, he could heal HIV and AIDS, this drug, this, this disease that affects so many people, um, was seen in Gambia uh, as, a, as a way for him to reinforce his position of power, that he is, he is all superseding, that he, has, that he has the ability to really cure people, that he has the ability to punish people, that he is really uh, the figurehead of Gambia, and that no one could take him out of power. Nick, it's been great talking to you, especially to see how Gambia has moved on since Jame was in power. Thanks very much. And that's it for this week. For more on this story, do visit aljazeera.com forward slash rewind or share your thoughts with us at facebook.com forward slash AJ Rewind. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>